Let's put an example. Now we have a truck traveling at 60 miles an hour. Okay? And then it starts to apply brake. And the brakes are equipped with ABS system, which is anti-slip braking system. Right? And the final scenario is the the velocity has reduced to 20 miles an hour. Okay? So initially it's traveling at 60 and then in the end it's at 20. You're asked to find the shortest amount of time that the truck will go from 60 down to 20. Okay? And during this braking process the wheels, the tires are about to slide. Okay? So it's just before you start sliding. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, that means the static coefficient of friction is at its maximum. Okay? And that's given. 0.65. Okay? Just a quick digression. Right? Recall from the statics. Right? So your coefficient of friction, right, the static portion, right, is linear and it reaches maximum. Okay? and beyond which it becomes kinetic. Alright? So this is maximum static coefficient. And that's given. Okay. So now, <clears throat> time is involved here. Okay? So you have to find the short amount of time which reflects this situation right here okay, where the wheel is about to slide. You're given velocity. Uh, initial and final velocity. Okay, so velocity is involved, time is involved, so maybe impulse momentum method could be useful. So let's apply it. Okay, and let's write down the whole equation. Okay, mv final minus mv initial equals this guy right here. Right, from T1 to T2. Right, in this case, T1 is zero. So we start measuring right, at time zero. Right, so you have to find the total amount of time. So T2 is the unknown here. Okay, here left hand side, you have mass and velocity. Okay, so the final initial velocity is both given and they're in the x direction. Right? So let's define this as my positive x direction. And that's the only direction that we're interested in. Okay? Because that's where the velocities are given here. Okay. And now the weight or mass chart's not given, right? But let's see. Right hand side, now we have all the forces, some forces are integrated over time. Okay? So let's find out what kind of forces I'm involved here. So, draw free body diagram just like before. Okay? So, free body diagram of the truck. Okay? Just a simplified thing, I'm going to draw just a box. Okay? I'm going to draw this free body diagram in such a way that it reflects this impulse momentum equation. So, this truck, okay. Um, for this term mv2, right, and draw another okay, um, rectangle for mv1 equals right hand side. Okay, so just do it out. So I have mv2, mv1, okay, equals. Okay, now this term now okay, I'm going to draw all the forces, right? Force times time. What kind of force are involved here? Okay, draw all the forces in all different directions. So now I have the weight of the truck, of course, going down. That's a force. I have normal force from the ground pushing back up. That's not a force. And obviously I have friction force horizontally. Again, friction force opposes any potential relative motion right, between your particle and the surface. In this case, it's not sliding, but if it were to slide, it would slide okay, to 
to the right relative to the ground. Okay. So the potential sliding motion okay, is so that the truck goes to the right. So my friction force goes to the left. Okay, so it's opposite that. So this is my friction force, which is really braking force, right? So it's the right braking force. Okay, so left hand side, <coughs> we have the MV term, the linear momentum term. So this is the final linear momentum, initial linear momentum. Right hand side, I have impulse, right? So force times time, in this case, just to reflect this equation, okay, which is force and time. So just add a little time here. So W times T, N times T, and then F break times T, right? So each of these terms is an impulse, right? And by the way, each of these forces is constant, right? Constant weight, constant normal force, and constant breaking force, okay? Which is an assumption that I made, right? So um, this breaking force, you know, the driver, you know, pushing on the pedal, um, in such a way that it applies braking force um, uniformly throughout this process. Okay, so being constant, therefore you can take this the force out, and so therefore we can split that into these three separate forces. Okay, or impulses, to be more precise. Okay, so now I have this picture set up. Keep in mind that this impulse momentum equation is a vector equation. Okay, so we need to apply this into the principal direction. Right? I have x. Now I can define vertical as y direction too. Okay? So I have two vertical forces and one horizontal force. Right? So let's apply this impulse momentum equation in the vertical direction first. This is what happens. The y component, okay, since there's no y direction of momentum uh, or velocity, so zero minus zero equals right hand side, so sum of all the impulses, which is n times t, positive going up, minus weight times t. Therefore, zero and then take t out of it. Okay, so it cancels out, so N equals W, symbol as that. Okay. So normal force equals weight. Now keep going, apply that in the X direction. Okay. X direction. So this minus that, so I have MV2 minus MV1 equals right hand side, so I, this is the only term that survives okay, in the x direction. So but however this goes to the left, right? So this is a negative x direction. Right? Negative of breaking force times t. Now, again t is the unknown here. Right? Okay, so now I can rewrite this three body diagram here. Let's keep going then. Mass is weight over G, V2 minus weight over G, V1 equals negative breaking force, which is really a friction force. A friction force equals mu S times normal force times time. So, mu S times, now from down here, I have normal force equals weight. Let's bring it in. Therefore, so you have weight, weight, and weight. So, W disappears. So, it's not a function of weight. Okay. So, I'm going to move the G over. So, that would V2 minus V1 equals negative S times G times T. Therefore, time equals, boom, move everything over. Negative 
G equals, now you plug things in. Alright, so plug everything in, and then keep in mind, velocity is given in miles per hour, you need to convert it to feet per second. Okay? Plug it in, final answer is 2.8 seconds. Okay? So 2.8 seconds is the minimum amount of time they will take under the ABS braking.